IKEA is huge. It consumes 1% of the world's wood supply and sells 1 billion meatballs every year. Now it's focusing its resources on making the home smart. We went to Sweden to talk to the company about its smart home ambitions. This is IKEA 2.0. So how, what are the products in uh, HomeSmart today? Well, today the offering from IKEA HomeSmart started off with uh, the wireless charging, which is uh, the Nordmärke, the Riga, the table lamp, the Hektar table lamp with integrated wireless charging. We have the Trodfri smart lighting. Yeah. We have the Kadrillian feature, which are the smart blinds. Right. And we also have the sound products ENB and Symphonisk. The HomeSmart initiative was started in 2012 when Bjorn Block joined IKEA's lighting division just as the company was launching the Upleva TV. You remember the Upleva TV, right? It was a major embarrassment for IKEA and a lesson learned that technology is hard. It's a television that is fully integrated into a piece of IKEA furniture. Take a look. Upleva comes with an illustrated instructional manual and all the essential pieces for assembling your furniture and state-of-the-art plasma screen television set. We also make meatballs. We're used to do this type of products and, you know, shelves and, and couches and beds and, and all the products that you think about when you're thinking about IKEA. So when we then started to think about smart products in, in the sense that they have chips in them, of course, there has been a lot of uh, just explanation to the rest of our um, organization and, and our colleagues. We didn't start IKEA Smart Home. We started IKEA Home Smart because the home comes first. IKEA designs its products at its headquarters here in Almolt, Sweden, a town of just 9,000 people. It's 6,000 miles away from Silicon Valley, but it still has to compete with the likes of Apple and Google for the same tech talent. This town is responsible for the 9,500 products IKEA sells, including the 2,000 new products swapped in each year. IKEA has the ability to pick winners and set trends. In fact, they're probably a big reason your LED light bulbs are so cheap, regardless of where you bought them from. We set out the journey not only to go all in LED, but also to say, let's go from 10 euros to, to 1 euro. And uh, a few years down the line, now we're there. We're selling a two pack for 1 euro now. How are you choosing which product range to go into? When IKEA HomeSmart started, we were based in lighting. And then uh, we came from cords. We, we, we knew that cords were like a hassle. People hated cords, people hated charging, you know, but it was still a big need. So then we started with that, as you say, not as a proof of concept, but as, as a clear product range that we thought, okay, let's try out also our ideas on how to develop home, home furnishing with technology influences. It's all about simplicity. Our customers, they are quite new to gadgets. They are not the techie nerds. They need to be able to understand what it can do for them and not having too many different features and functionalities and a tricky setup. We would like to go beyond the resident geek of the home right. and uh, invite more people. And physical interfaces are a fantastic way of, uh, of doing that. And we would like to expand that offering and uh, make it so easy that it finally doesn't feel like technology. In 2015, IKEA had to choose between two competing wireless charging technologies when launching its first home smart product. We had to take an early bet, and we picked the standard that we thought was going to be the winning one, and we picked Qi. And uh, I think we, we actually impacted quite a few other players just by picking that standard. Yeah, because Apple then chose it, and then it was, it was done. And Apple chose it, and, and when they launched, two years later, when they launched their first phone, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10, with Qi, they had an IKEA logo on stage saying that they are now compatible with IKEA. Smart home leaders should be concerned about the world's largest furniture retailer's ability to easily enter the home. A walled garden starts with a seed, and more often than not, IKEA is the first company people invite through the door. Here, let me explain. Imagine you're leaving home for the first time, furnishing a dorm or a shared apartment. You go to Ikea for a bed, couch, and a light when you realize that you can buy a Symphonist lamp that's also a speaker that works with your free Spotify account. Then for a couple years, you're satisfied that no matter what goes wrong, at least you've got your sound issue handled. And since you need a bulb, you might as well make it a home smart. Soon you'll need your own place, a few more bulbs, and maybe a couple of Sonos speakers. Then the kids arrive and you buy even more gear until you finally die. That's Ikea's advantage with home smart. Don't get me wrong, right now HomeSmart lags the competition in terms of both functionality and breadth of devices. Hue still dominates smart bulbs, and IKEA is dependent on Google, Apple, and Amazon for their voice assistants. IKEA needs help to grow its HomeSmart ecosystem. Your speakers aren't smart. 
for example? I mean, they don't have microphones in it. Why did you choose not to have mics? I think they are super smart because they play a lot of good music and connect to all the music services, uh, but they don't have voice control in isolation. Right. But you can enable them with voice control. If you connect into a gateway, you can connect into an Echo Dot, you can connect into um, an Alexa, or you can use Siri and so on. So we enable voice control, but we haven't put a microphone into our products. The Sonos partnership created an overwhelming response for the Symphonos lamp and shelf, both of which feature Sonos compatible speakers. The range is also the first co-branded product ever sold in an IKEA store. It's a true partnership. The collaboration started in 2016. So we went knocking on Sonos store because we knew they were the market leaders and we knew that we needed a partner because with the Upleva case that was not very successful. That was the TV. In that was the TV, yeah. exactly. And it was not very successful. We did not have a partner. It was a new product area for us. We didn't have any experience. So we knew if we want to be successful stepping into sound, we need a strong partner in this. Internally, IKEA never viewed HomeSmart with the same importance as its formal business areas, like living room and bedroom and bathroom. And frankly, the lack of priority shows. HomeSmart products aren't terrible. The Sonos compatible speakers are pretty good. But IKEA's HomeSmart documentation is confusing, adding devices to the home drives me nuts, and the app is buggy. In IKEA, we have the formula of democratic design, where we have form, function, sustainability, low price, and quality. And obviously, here, we're not living up to quality and function in that sense. Our funding has been year on year, saying, let's, let's continue this project. Let's, let's see if we're going to do another year or two years on it now. In August, IKEA promoted HomeSmart into its own business area and that can have a major impact on what comes next. If you're a business area, uh, it comes with a lot of, um, what can I say, givens. You get a dedicated space in the store, you, you have a certain budget, blah, 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 blah. And HomeSmart being a business area is a big thing. We have a very strict article number frame within IKEA. If we did not get an article number from that other business area, we could not actually uh, develop the product. The article numbers is quite a hot currency because uh, we tend to have 9,500 articles in a, in a typical store. Okay. And uh, even if we introduce 2,000 new products every year, this number, 9,500, is not going up. So that means that 2,000 are going out. Seeing where IKEA has moved from in 75 years today, until today, I can't even think of where we're gonna be in 75 years from now. So it might be good to force ourselves to think in a five year or 10 year perspective, but when you go to IKEA, you experience the whole home. You go through living room and bedroom, you go to kitchens, right. children's IKEA. So it's, it's not only a luxury to have access to the whole home, it's actually our obligation to look at where should the home be smart, in what rooms, for what activities. So now being a business unit, it's just being amplified that that is our task. That is our mission, to now look at the smart home, not a smart product category. IKEA is reinventing itself as a furniture company that understands the role of technology in the home. When IKEA was founded in 1943, the world had more dreams than technology. Now it seems the opposite is true. We have so much cheap technology that any dumbass idea can be mass produced and marketed as smart. If computing is supposed to be everywhere in the future, then why not from the company that's already everywhere in the home? Hey, thanks for watching. Why don't you like and subscribe? Is that how you do it? Oh my god! <laughs> that was the most energy we've seen yes, all I was night. Like, YouTuber mode.